natural. There have been a lot of mystics and saints over the centuries that as you go through this purification process in consciousness, then you realize that, that what were considered basic, natural, Norman, human appetites are really ego appetites, because the ego is the belief in lack, and that's what an appetite is. And so, you know, people will do everything, use relationships, or use food, or cigarettes, or drugs, or whatever, to kind of fill an empty hole that it's like a bottomless pit, that the appetites just go on and on and on. And I think of Jesus, um, I remember him talking to the woman at the well in the Bible and said, Drink of me and you will never thirst again. Mm. Uh, and that comes to mind frequently, as, as we have the mana from heaven, as you fulfill your function and your purpose, and your mind becomes unified and, and it everything lines up in integrity, then that lack that used to be there, or used to be perceived or felt, it disappears, because wholeness takes the place of lack. And therefore, how things play out in terms of form can seem abnormal from the human perspective, but actually very natural in terms of the, the spiritual awakening. So, those are the kind of things that, that um, we look at it. Also, I think just generally, you were asking about the group and the community. We really, we really don't focus on the body, positively or negatively. So, we're, uh, I would say our community is not really f that fashion conscious, neither are we trying to live as ascetics. And so, okay, let's get the G-strings for everybody, <laughs> and, and, you know, <laughs> we, we aren't going that direction, neither, neither are we going, you know, into to fashion. It's, it's more of a lack of interest in the body. Uh, and there's Course in Miracles teachings like, my, my body is a wholly neutral thing. That's true to the Holy Spirit, and the more you listen to the Holy Spirit and align with the Holy Spirit, you know, the ideas of a beautiful body, or an ugly body, or a, a fit body, or an unfit body, or even if you go deeper into it, the idea of, of a healthy body, or an unhealthy body, they just start to lose their, uh, their weight in the mind, because you're, you're getting into these definitions that all illness is mental illness, and all health is inner peace, and you give yourself so fully over to those Christ's definitions that all of a sudden you put less and less and less emphasis on the body. You're not worried about it, you're not concerned about it. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's, it's, people say that it's sick or so forth, or even unto death. You know, I always say, you know, in the world the worst form of sickness is death. <laughs> How sick is he? Dead. <laughs> He's dead. Uh, that's like extreme sickness. <laughs> We talk about bungee jumping and extreme, extreme sports, that's extreme sickness. How sick are we talking? Dead. <laughs> but in Jesus' case, with Lazarus, dead, dead for three days. Oh, that's, that's really dead. That's not, that's not close. <laughs> Lazarus' body smells, and he's in his grave clothes. Okay, that's sick. That's really sick. Lazarus, come forth. Okay, oh, okay. no order of difficulty and miracles there. And, I think that's the general direction where we're going with this, is that it's just the lack of attention, and lack of focus on the body. As you're doing the mind training, you realize that it's all about your thoughts. And that really, the body and the world are a reflection of thoughts. So, you're working with the Holy Spirit and Jesus on thoughts and beliefs, and, and, and clearing your mind, and getting in alignment with Spirit, and that's where your focus goes more and more and more and more. I think it was maybe last summer or something, I don't know if Suzanne said something to me about crowns or holes, was it holes in a couple teeth? And I said, can you chew? She said, yeah. I said, okay. And that was the end of that. <laughs> so much for the field of dentistry. <laughs> the spirit is not really <laughs> into the form. <laughs> you know.